In the previous episode, we improved the performance of our scrolling experience by passing elements as props. But performance improvements is not the most common use of this pattern. In fact, it actually raises some performance questions by itself, which is a bit ironic, of course. So what is the main purpose of this pattern and should we really be worried about its performance? Welcome to the Advanced React course, episode 3. Today we are going to look into how we can create more generic components with little configuration using elements as props, what's the deal with the default props for components that are passed as elements, and whether passing elements as props is harmful for performance or not. Imagine yourself as a developer in a small startup, where you need to code really fast and requirements to features are changing constantly. One day you need to implement a button that can show a loading indicator. Not a problem, just pass is loading prop. Next day, we actually need for the button to show all icons in that place, not only the loading icon. Not a problem again, let's add another prop. Next day, we want to be able to change color of that icon. Another prop, then change size, then show avatars instead of the icon, that looks like the most complicated button ever existed. Fortunately, none of this is necessary. All we need to do is get rid of all those configuration props and keep only one icon, which will be an element passed from a parent component where we'll be able to configure it in any way we want. Show a loading icon, add some fancy color to the icon, make it smaller, or even show an avatar instead. But the button example is not where this pattern shines. It's particularly useful for larger components. Imagine a model dialog, for example, that has a footer. It's highly likely that in real life you would want to show different components there. Maybe a cancel button, a cancel and submit button. You would want to change text on those buttons and so on. Configuring that through props will be quite hard. But if we pass that footer as a prop, life was never easier. Or even better, something like three columns layout. We can't even do any configuration there. You literally want to render anything in those columns. And we can. And of course, the children pattern we looked at in the previous episode. A large content area would make more sense as a children rather than a named prop. But this pattern, of course, has its downsides. One of the main objections to it is that it's too flexible. For columns layout, it's okay to render anything there. But does it really make sense for a button? In real life, the button would want to have at least some control over what goes into that prop. If a button is disabled, for example, you would want to make the icon look disabled as well. Bigger buttons would want to have bigger icons, blue buttons might want to have white icons by default, and so on. With the current implementation, all of this is a bit problematic. We need to do that manually every time we render a button. In real life, it will be forgotten half the time. Luckily, there is another solution. Remember that those elements are just objects? We can use React clone element function to clone those objects and mess with the props inside. We can create a default prop object for the icon that is configured based on the button props, merge it with the existing icons props that are passed by the component that renders it, assign it to the cloned icon, and finally render that cloned icon where the original icon was supposed to go. Now all of our button with icon examples are reduced to this. Clean icon, nothing to remember, but everything just works. Magic. And if we really need to override those props, we still can do that. Speaking of magic, the fact that those default props are so hidden is a downside by itself. It's super easy to make a mistake and override props for good by accident. That will basically destroy the icon's API. If I pass a different color to it now, it just won't work. Good luck to anyone using your button. They will have some fun times trying to understand why the icon color works when the icon is rendered by itself, but doesn't work when it's inside the button. 
Another concern that sometimes arises with this pattern is the performance. Look at the code here. We have an app component that controls the dialog state, the dialog itself, and its footer in a constant. The question with which even experienced developers struggle sometimes is this. The footer is declared outside of the dialog. It's there even if the dialog is closed and the state is false. Does that mean that the footer will always be rendered, even if the dialog is not on the screen? Won't this slow down the app component? Fortunately, there is nothing to worry here, and the answer is no. Footer is just an element, and remember, elements are just objects. Until it's put into the render tree, it just sits there in memory and does nothing. And it will be put in the render tree only when the dialog's content, including this prop, is rendered. It doesn't matter where the footer is created. What matters is where it was included in the return of a component. This will happen only when the state turns true. This is actually what makes routing patterns, like in one of the versions of React Router, completely safe. There is no condition here, so it feels like the app owns and renders both page and other page at the same time. But it doesn't. The route component inside of it has a condition like this. So unless the path matches the actual route, the page element is never returned, and as a result, never rendered. So as you can see, performance is not really a concern here. But the default props with clone elements usually are. They are way too fragile and magical to use for something more complicated than one or two primitive props. That's why you rarely see it in real-life apps. And that's why the React team recommends against it in the docs. But no worries. In React, there are a million ways to achieve exactly the same result. If you need to go crazy with the default props, or you want to calculate props based on the state of the host component, Another pattern is much better for it, the render props pattern. We're going to talk about that one in the next episode.